I'm Meredith Morakovitz alongside Jack Curry. Jack, the clubhouse got a lot more full this morning. Pitchers and catchers have been here for a couple of days, but position players finally reported. Nice to see a full clubhouse again, right? It was nice to watch Gio Urshela fielding some ground balls at third, Torres at short, LeMahieu was over there at second. We had the opportunity to talk to a few of those players. Mike Talkman made an appearance, Meredith. We were part of that interview situation, and he's ready to go. Healed from that calf injury and a player who provides defense. That's the no thing that I, I think about with Talkman. He had great offensive numbers last year, but this guy is an asset defensively, can give you plus defense in all three spots. Well, I actually asked Aaron Boone how he sees John Carlos Stanton this year. Is he mm -hmm. viewing him as an everyday DH? Is he viewing him as an everyday left fielder? And he said it is probably going to depend a lot on the guys around him. He knows he's athletic enough to play a solid left field. They feel very comfortable the way he's settled in over the last season and a half. Obviously, last season did not get in a lot of games when he was DHing, but a lot is going to be dependent on if guys need an off day or a half day to kind of get themselves healthy, or if everyone is healthy, maybe you'll see him DH a little bit more with Talkman in left field. Is there room for any other outfielders on this team? That's my question. It's a great question. I mean, we know there's a 26-man roster this season. I almost automatically see Tyler Wade as that 26th mm -hmm. man because of his versatility. I think you start to talk about your bench. I think there's a spot on this team for Mike Ford as, as a left-handed hitter to back up Void at first base because LeMahieu is now your steady second baseman. So in answer to your question, I'm, I'm not exactly sure if there is a way to squeeze uh, another outfielder on there because I think Wade kind of looms as that guy. And Andujar, who I think is absolutely making this team, might be getting some reps during the season in the outfield as well. And they'd really like to see him during spring training. He's already started working in the outfield a little bit. I'm sure we'll talk to him in coming days, but he's been moving around first base, third base, outfield, trying to find a way just to get that bat in the lineup. Wouldn't be surprised if you saw him DH a game or two to see how he looks there as well. I agree. And going back to your Stanton question to Boone, I thought Boone's answer to you was interesting. And if I'm reading tea leaves, as much as I think they need Stanton to play left field, from Boone's answer, I see a lot of DH in mm -hmm. uh, Stanton's future. They, they want him on the field. They want that bat in there. Left field at Yankee Stadium can be a tricky proposition. Remember when they got Stanton, Meredith, we all reported on this. They talked about the idea that in places like Camden Yards and Fenway Park, where it's a shorter left field, that's a spot where you can play Stanton and maybe not lose anything. So I, I don't know if it's going to be 60-40, 70-30. I do think to keep Stanton's bat in the lineup and keep him healthy, DH is going to be a slot. We see him in a lot. Valuable. And the emergence of Mike Talkman certainly mm -hmm. helps make that decision a little bit easier. There also were a lot of pitchers at work yeah. today. You saw Jay Happ mm -hmm. throwing to batters, Masahiro Tanaka as well. Tanaka working on a cutter. He'd like to use that a little bit more to left-handed batters. And who better to learn from? Yes. Then Andy Pettit. He was in camp today. Kind of nice to see Andy again. It was nice to see Andy, and you're right. What a perfect segue or a perfect headline to have Tanaka working on that cutter, a pitch that he wants to bore in on left-handed hitters. Now, obviously, Andy was a lefty, and his moved in on right-handed sure. hitters, but the point is, is still the same. And I looked it up on brooksbaseball.com. Tanaka threw his cutter about 6% of the time last year so that it – it is a weapon in his arsenal. It hasn't been a weapon that he's used a ton. Boone made it sound like he absolutely wants to increase the usage of that, make the slider and the splitter even better. A little bit better, even maybe a little bit more effective if he's able to own that side of the plate mm -hmm. with the cutter against left-handed batters. Time will tell whether or not he uses it. Uh, a lot of guys work on a lot of things in spring training, and then maybe as the regular season moves on, they're not comfortable doing mm -hmm. it. That's certainly something to keep an eye on. Jay Happ seemed pretty much business as usual. Yeah, he did, and I think Happ can have a big influence on the Yankees this season. Let's look at who he was in the second half of the mm -hmm. season when he finally got acclimated to the baseball when I think he also stopped experimenting a little bit, honestly. This is a guy whose bread and butter pitch has always been his four-seam fastball. The problem with the four-seamer was he was missing location with it. I think he got back to having more confidence in that pitch, and I think he's a pitcher the Yankees can rely on. You mentioned the position players, seeing LeMahieu out there, Torres out there. Gio Urshela, still a huge yeah. smile on his face, but when you mentioned Torres, it made me think of this. He addressed the media in the clubhouse, and of course, the Astros' questions were asked, and he certainly didn't shy away from it, Jack. He's usually a little reserved, 
but not today. He answered about four or five questions about making the transition from second base to shortstop. And then the questions about the Astros came. And you're right, Meredith. He was passionate. He was animated. Gleyber Torres, I would always describe him as being a very polite young man, but more on the reserve side. For him, this topic hit home like any player on the Yankees, like any player who feels as that they've been wronged by the Astros. He talked about how frustrating it was. And then the headline would be, he doesn't believe that they didn't cheat last season. He said, if you cheated and won in 2017, why wouldn't you cheat the year after that? And then the year after that, and then he used a very uh, interesting video <laughs> game analogy, which is more for people who play video games, not me. You, you, can, not, you, can you decipher that one for me? Not a huge video game player, <laughs> but apparently he plays video games with Luis Severino fairly frequently. And he said, look, if I'm sitting there and I'm playing video games with Luis Severino and I look over and I see his controller, what he's going to do next, and I use it and I win, you better believe I'm doing it again and I won again. So it sounds like he's already done that. So... Luis, we're sorry to inform you, but glaber has been cheating for a while. You might want to separate a little bit or at least cover the controller. It was a casual, everyday example, yeah, but it was, it was also a logical example. It was. And it shows you that Glaber Torres, like most people who have observed this situation, is angry at the Astros, believes that the Astros have violated baseball law by cheating. And Meredith, I, I drew the comparison the fact that he's from Venezuela, I asked him about a Jose Altuve. Mm -hmm. In the middle of all this with the Astros, this is someone that Torres has leaned on for advice. It's someone who is an idol in his native homeland. And even in that situation, I thought Torres gave a great answer. He's a great guy. He's a humble guy. He's called me in the off season to talk to me about my workouts. But if he did everything that people are saying that he did and he was involved in all this, that is wrong. That is not something I can have respect for. And he reiterated the fact in Venezuela, they teach you to respect the game. Yes. Cheating is not respecting the game. That is going to continue, I would think, throughout this spring training. There are several players that have not spoken on that yet. One being Aaron Judge. I imagine that's going to come in the future. Yeah, I think we'll probably hear from a bevy of Yankees tomorrow. which is the first day that position players will actually all be in uniform and working out. Judge is an obvious example because of what Cody Bellinger is on the record as having said, that he feels Altuve stole an MVP award from Judge in 2017. So you know someone's going to ask Judge about that. It might be me or you. It's going to be somebody. That question will come up early. Anything else on your mind today, Jack? No, it's just it's another beautiful day. I know the folks back in the Northeast who are watching this and don't want to hear about how great the weather is, they can tune off right now. But it's <laughs> it's been a great spring training. The weather's been terrific and a lot a lot to get done and starts to gear up even more tomorrow. And what is exciting, we are not too far away from the first game that, yes, is going mm -hmm. to televise. I believe that is February 22nd against the Blue Jays. We will have it on Yes, so be sure to stick with us. Until then, we'll be on Twitter, we'll be on Instagram, we'll be, where else will we be, Jack? We'll be everywhere. We'll be everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> and then on The Real TV, come February 22nd. We'll see you tomorrow.